All right. So for those of you who know me, my favorite actor is as of late. Well, as of the last, hmm, last couple of years has surprisingly been Andrew Garfield. Um, I bought Hacksaw Ridge last year after watching the film, after just watching the battle scenes on television on uh, where I was living at the time. And um, during my recovery, I watched a lot of Hacksaw Ridge. I, I ended up buying the DVD. Then I also watched Tick, Tick, Boom. I watched a bunch of his other films. And that is when I wanted... I love I love the Blu-ray because um, it took you behind the scenes as to who who Desmond Doss uh, really was, but there's more to the story than meets the eye. So I just the curiosity bug. So the book that I ended up checking out from the library is called Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge by Boonton Boonton Herndon, and I read it in two days. I read it on March 9th through the tenth. The rating. So let's take a look. Here's the Blu-ray. And here is the book. Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge. And if you read, if you can read the title in this awful light, it says, The Gripping True Story That Inspired the Film. But if you look above, The Official Authorized Story of Desmond Dawes. Now, here's a little thing about the book. Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge is a reprinting of the original. And the original book, it says here, if you can read it, it is rare for a book out of print for 49 years to be republished. This book originally published as The Unlikeliest Hero is different. As the most authoritative source of information about the life and World War II exploits of Desmond T. Doss, the book was the principal and rich resource for the true story of Doss portrayed in the 2016 motion picture, Hacksaw Ridge, directed by Mel Gibson and produced by Bill Mechanic. That's all I'm going to say about that one. So, The Unlikeliest Hero is was the original story uh, that was written by, Boot, by mm, Booten, Booten Herndon. But Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge has a lot more uh, to it. And as you can see, almost every single page is flagged, uh, which means I'm going to have to buy the book. This is a library version. Let's put this aside for the moment. So the book, well, there's the cover. It's the same cover as the DVD of the war film Hacksaw Ridge. Also, the title mentions Official Authorized Story of Desmond Doss. And if those of you who don't know about Desmond Doss, um, he was a World War II medic, uh, and he was the only one of his entire company to not fire a weapon. He never even had a weapon on him, a firearm, none of that. His only weapon was his knowledge of, of combat first, first aid, his faith, and, um, a determination to save as many lives as he possibly could. So why I chose this book, I love Hacksaw Ridge and I love Andrew Garfield, and I wanted to find out exactly how accurate the life of Desmond Doss was to the film, or rather, how how just how accurate the film was to Desmond Doss's uh, life, okay? So the feeling this book evoked in me, what this guy went through prior to battle is just... Uh, it's mind-boggling. It's, I wrote down, helplessness behind courage in the face of adversity. And adversity means difficulties, it means misfortune. So what this guy was doing, he, his brother Harold Hal in The Conscientious Objector uh, says, when you have a man with the with the courage of his own convictions to stand up in the face of adversity, you don't mess with that. So, but can you imagine, while he was trying to show courage and bravery and sticking to his decision to not fire a weapon, he also faced adversity. And behind that brave courage, uh, that brave Mm, well, that facade 
behind the mask of courage. So here's the front of courage, but behind it is helplessness. We don't see what's behind the mask. Those of us that are very judgmental, those of us who judge before we before we ask, we can't see behind it. And that's something that I'm not going to, I don't want to get too far off on tangent here, but uh, recently I attended a virtual meeting of this, uh, no, it was a virtual webinar of this Jewish artist named Monica Marks. And um, she does a lot of mixed media. Um, yeah, yeah, she's a multimedia uh, artist, and she created a bunch of masks, and she would ask us questions about some of the work that she did, and so she would have a mask that shows that sh that, that 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 had a bunch of images on it that are very very subtle, but when she when the camera uh, photographed the back of the mask, there was something very the images that were that were behind the mask were very dark as if that person was hiding something from their past that they did not want to show up front. So favorite passages. I mean, every page in that book is is flagged, which is why I'm going to have to buy it. But these are just some of the most prominent ones, and these could be found at the beginning of the book. So Max Cleland, who was a former mayor, uh, he met Desmond Doss, and he says, Our eyes met. And I looked directly into his gaze. I knew here was a man who possessed a determination forged of steel. That's who Desmond Doss was. And Doss, one of the things that he said that is in the film is, while others are taking life, I will be saving life. As long as there is life, there is hope. Basically, if you remember the scene um, tore in, in the, in the battle. I'm not going to get too much into this, but, uh, there's that scene where Desmond Doss has his true, has his first taste of a soldier who in many instances would be left for dead because of his circumstances. Damien Tomlinson was an Afghan war veteran of the Australian army. He had both of his legs blown off and he got the part in the film of Ralph Morgan, whose legs are blown off in the battle sequence. Andrew talks a lot about this in the SAG AFRA of the, uh, of the behind the scenes of, ha of, uh, Hacksaw Ridge. And he, 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 he talked about what had happened, but his portrayal of Desmond Doss, to me, this is what Doss was saying. Um, the medic, uh, Irv Schechter, who did, who, who did exist, he comes to Desmond Doss and Ralph Morgan, and he's looking at Ralph Morgan's legs, and he says, "Leave him. He will, he will not. He will. He will not last a day." And Ralph is begging Doss to not leave him because he 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 has kids. He wants to go home. Why 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 leave him there? And Doss says, "I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to get you home." And in the book Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge, when he when Desmond Doss actually brought that soldier. Uh, back, even even the uh, the uh, guys who were lowering the most critically wounded down, they're saying, you know, this guy is 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 not going to thank you. D haven't you ever heard of, of 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 a triage? There is no way that this guy is even going to make it down the ridge. And Doss looks at this person and he says, "You don't tell me how to run my job. You don't know that. Now get him down before I report you and have you brought down from and 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 have you brought back down to private." So. To me, when he says, as long as there is life, there is hope. But I think what Desmond Doss, in my personal opinion, if a man had both of his legs blown off and Desmond Doss was to come and, and, and for Desmond Doss to, to come to that person, just because, I mean, to, to others who had been there, Irv Schechter was a medic. And of course, in the film, we can understand that he, as a medic, he knew what he was doing. Um, and we kind of have to pity his decision on what, on why he would leave soldiers who he, after much experience on the battlefield, he, he, he knew from experience that there was very little that he could do and that he would just give them a shot of morphine and 
hope for the best, hope that they would die quickly and that they wouldn't, that they wouldn't suffer too long. But to Desmond Doss, when he says, as long as there is life, there is still hope, another layer underneath that from what I, from what I personally took away was that he saw that soldier as not half a man and not half a soldier. Just because the guy's legs were, the, uh, the person's legs were, was blown off, he may be half a body. But to Desmond Doss, that did not make that person half a man. And that did not make that person half a soldier. That person is still a man. That person is still a soldier to the very core. And that person deserves to live as long as there is life still left in him. Give them that chance. And that's what Doss did. Now, in the first chapter of the book, like I said, every page is flagged. But at the beginning, the first chapter is called The Loneliest Soldier. And you can just see the drama behind the writing of what really happened. So at the beginning, when uh, Desmond Doss had his first his first taste of what it was like to be different from the rest of his platoon, he is basically ridiculed. And it says here, he lay silently in the, in the hard, narrow bunk, his eyes glistening with tears of loneliness and pain. And he was to endure many, many days and months of that kind of ill treatment. Did reading this book change me in any way? I would say I have greater appreciation for what this man went through. And I thought about the conscientious subjector. Um, yeah, so here's, so here's what happened. Because I watched the movie and because I read the book, I wanted to find out because sometimes, uh, some of these authorized official stories don't, don't tell everything. So again, my curiosity got me. And I ended up buying the DVD of The Conscientious Objector when Doss was still, was still alive. And then I became even more interested to see just how accurate was the script. I wanted to read the script myself. So I found an original, I found a script online, but when I looked at it, I said, I printed the original script and then I ended up buying the final movie script. So let me show you what's in my possession of these resources as of right now. So because I watched the movie, this then prompted me to check out the book from the library. And then after reading the book, my curiosity got me. So I ended up buying The Conscientious Objector, a documentary film by Terry Benedict. And Benedict and... Um, who was the other person? Uh, another producer helped. Um, they're they're in the beginning of the of the um, of the intro. They mention it, but because of that, I wanted to find out exactly, you know, because what had happened is that behind in the behind the scenes on the Blu-ray version and on on, on the regular DVD, some scenes were were uh, deleted, and I wanted to find out exactly just how accurate the movie was from the book to the script adaption to the film version and from what they took from the conscientious objector. And so, but this was interesting. I put, I printed the script and I have it in a binder, but this is not the one that was uh, co-written by Andrew Knight. If you look this one is Hacksaw Ridge by Robert Schenken. That was one of the, he was the original script writer. But then this one says revisions by Randall Wallace in 2013. So not too long after that, Andrew Knight was brought on to make the final, uh, uh, to, to be part of this collaboration to help, uh, recreate the script. And I was very surprised that this, this script, um, it's interesting how each of these have a little bit of a discrepancy uh, between between all these resources. So, for instance, Desmond Doss's real brother's name is Harold, but in this script, the brother's name is Mark. 
And the battle sequences that are described in the script are more historically accurate, including Desmond Doss's reflection of what occurred when he was eight, not when he was a teen. If you remember, for those of you who watched Hacksaw Ridge, if you remember the scene where he's talk, where Desmond Doss is in the foxhole with Smitty, and Smitty is trying to figure out, you know, what. What makes Desmond Doss tick? Why won't this guy ever carry a gun? So in that scene, Desmond, there's a, there's a couple of scenes where Desmond Doss reflected on, where, where we see a reflection of his past where he confronted his father who shoved his mother aside and he was trying to get the pistol out of his father's hand and the gun goes off. We don't know what happens after that until that scene. Um, that, that didn't happen. That, occurrence actually actually uh, happened when Desmond Doss was eight and that memory is actually whoop, that memory is actually uh, written in the script in the original so I bought the film version I'm sorry the film the final shooting script of Hacksaw Ridge and I'm going I'm gonna see exactly what was changed and what what was actually intended to be in the film. And what I would like to do for a future project on this channel is to do an educational analysis of all those resources from the book to the documentary to the film script adaption to the film itself. And what I would like to do, I'm trying to... Get a hold of some of the people who worked on the film, specifically the script writers. I'm also going to try to get a, get a hold of Peter Pound, who was the storyboard concept artist. Now, this is a guy I never heard of, but I have heard of Mad Max. And apparently, he's the storyboard comic book artist who has created, who, who has created the Mad, Mad Max Fury, uh, comic strip. Uh, now I didn't see any pictures, no storyboard of Hacksaw Ridge, but I'm wondering if I'm I'm gonna try to see if I can write to him and see if he can maybe send me a few pictures and maybe do an interview with him as well. But I think that'd be a really unique thing to look over to see exactly what was true, what was false, what was created for poetic license, for dramatic purposes, and what was intentionally left out. Okay, where did I leave off? Okay, who would I like to share this book with? Look look who I wrote. Andrew Garfield, right here. The reason why I would like to share this book with him, and, and, and again, this is an actor who does the research. He does the homework. He takes the time and and energy to really not just learn about the pe the uh, person he is portraying, but he goes to the places. He actually will travel to the location. He will he he needs things that are tangible, so he could feel what this person was feeling, what this person was doing. He talks about that in Ninety Nine Homes, which I haven't seen the film, but he but he worked in carpentry for about three months just to get himself prepared for it, and then he said he had about three to four months of preparation time for for. Uh, army, army training and, um, learning about Desmond Doss, picking up the, the Southern accent as well. Um, but the book itself, um, I don't know if he ended up reading The Unlikeliest Hero, if there was even a copy of it, but this book, Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge, was actually published in 20, in 2016. So I'm wondering if it took place after the film had premiered, and I don't know if the actor had um, a chance had, had had a chance to read it, but I said the actor performed as Desmond Doss, and he did so much research. But the new reprinted book was published after after the movie premiered. I hope he can take away even more and realize just how special his courage was to take on this role of a lifetime, because he even said, "Damn it, this this man actually lived." To go into war without a firearm was crazy, but this guy was the real deal. So, um, the writing style, I loved it. The message, I loved it. Now, here's the thing. Um, it's very, 
To me, the story is very religious based. That's how I kind of viewed uh, redemption. It's very religiously and faith focused. Um, some people might take offense to that, but um, uh, it kind of intertwines with historical accuracy as to the background of Desmond Doss and 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 what he did. And the reading experience, I loved it. So that has been the Reading Life uh, blog for February and March. And there's still more books to come. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. So don't forget to click like and subscribe to my channel. Oh, and I completely forgot my tagline. Usually I'll say at the beginning, grab a notepad, grab a pen or a quill and, and get ready to write down with me. So if you didn't get a chance to do that, once again, you can replay this and um, write down any, any notes that you prefer. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. This was something totally unexpected. So this is, uh, today is April 25th, and I just wanted to update everyone on what's been happening so far and what what I ordered, what came in. So this is a follow-up to Redemption at Hacksaw Ridge reading, reading vlog. I had told everyone that I had ordered the movie script. Well... I got it from this thing called Film Film Mania Gifts, and it's from the UK. And if you look, it looks like a genuine script, doesn't it? It says Hacksaw Ridge, and it has this is what they call a I hope I say it right a gig, a gickly cover. So it's like a specific um cover for uh the script and. It says Robert Schenken and Andrew Knight. You would think this was the final shooting script of the film. And guess what? It's not. It's the same thing. Screenplay by Robert Schenken. Revisions by Randall Wallace. So... This is not the final shooting script. I'm wondering if there's uh, the final f uh, shooting script from another uh, site that I have not been able to see. So I basically paid almost a little over $40 to get this thing when I basically downloaded it for for free from Script Slug. So, but at least this has a Git a, a, a Clean cover. I'm sorry, a Git Clean cover with uh, the signatures of some of the actors, including Andrew Garfield, if you can even read that. <laughs> uh, but a bit disappointing because it's not its not the same thing. It's not the one by Schenken and Knight. So let's put that off to the side. I will get back to this one in just a moment. Here was the book that I ordered from Amazon. This is the same as the library version. So now I'll have to flag the pages that I marked down. That's going to be a lot. To... Uh, hopefully do this film analysis educational visual video from the book to the film adaption. And last but not least, this was just something on a whim. I found this on Amazon. It's called a Dots, Lines, Swirls coloring coloring book with, Hex, with the, um, I guess, pictures of Hexar Ridge. Now, if you look closely, you can see, like, there's dots and swirls basically based on the photographs and I thought that you would see the same kind of images on the inside and you can color them the way that you want to and fine, right? I don't know whose brilliant idea it was to create this thing, but I have yet to see the magic for myself because when you open it, now there is a good image. You can see that that is Andrew Garfield as Desmond Doss. And it says this book this book belongs to so and so, but then check this out. What is this supposed to be? What is that supposed to be? What is this supposed to be? So, 
a dots and swirls lines coloring book, but so many of these images are just, I mean, some of them you can definitely kind of tell because of, I guess, the, um, the gray gradient in, uh, in, in between, but uh, I have absolutely no idea how this is going to, <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea how this is going to go. Some of it you can sort of see, but the rest of it is like, what am I looking at here? So this was on Amazon. I wouldn't recommend it until I myself try this, mm, this coloring technique. And we will see what happens from there. But um, anyway, so I wrote to Robert Shankin. I also wrote to uh, Peter Pound. I wrote to the agency, to uh, the agent of Andrew Knight, and hopefully I will um, I will hear back soon. This is going to be a project that I will that is going to take a long time to divvy up. I have a feeling, because uh, because like I said, I want to do an educational video, an educational visual video. What I would like, what I would really love to do is I want to show this audience what happens when I'm reading, and if you. Uh, I recently posted my interview with Lisa C, and I was explaining to her how how I read. I am not, to my knowledge, I am not dyslexic, but as I am reading, for instance, the scene. This is the page where um, I wrote that quote down. Uh, he lay silently in the hard, narrow bunk, his eyes glistening with tears of loneliness and pain. I don't usually read aloud. I read silently. And as that's happening, images form from the words. I don't even realize I'm reading. It's like I'm reading, but then this film comes over my eyes and I don't see the words. Instead, like Brian Selznick, I see... A storyboard. I see a film coming to life before me as I'm reading. So I will get back to you guys soon on that video. Um, that will take a long time to go through. And I look forward to seeing you guys um, for the next reading vlog for next month. And I did go to a few museums. I did go to the LA Festival of Books with much difficulty. And I will um, create another video on those trips as well.